How do you feel the uh, the Hampton Richmond Football Club can um, progress both with the stadium and on the pitch? Well, there there's a, there's a difficult balance to be struck between you know, enlarging the club, building on it, attracting more fans in the local community, and uh, because we've got that problem in spades with the RFU, because they, you know they've now grown to eighty thousand gates, mm. and you know the local residents are often very unhappy because there's massive disruption. But I mean, broadly, it's in the interests of the borough that we are, you know, talking them as a sporting mecca. So, but but we've got to manage these things carefully. The similarly, they're all kind of problems with Harlequins, who have gradually expanded from gates of under two thousand. They now get regularly ten, eleven, twelve. Mm. Um, and similarly, there are community issues there. So I think if if the football club are going to expand and they're trying to get up from two fifty to say a thousand or something, it's probably a reasonable objective. Uh, they've got to take into account that it's in an awkward place, it's in a tight little corner, there's a lot of housing round about, mm -hmm. and it's so, so they're going to have to manage this quite carefully. Uh, with, the, with the Twickenham Stadium, Twickenham Stoop and the Beverley, uh, the Twickenham and Hampton area is quite big on, the, on uh, getting visitors for sporting events. Uh, do you feel the transport system is, uh, is adequate? Well, not really. This is one of the problems, um, and the problem with the RFU is that the main route is bisected by a dual carriageway, which of course crazy up for mayhem every, every time they play, and there's traffic backed up for miles in all directions, so it, it's un unsatisfactory. And, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, if people had thought about this 70 years ago, we <laughs> would have been somewhere else, but, you know, they are where they are, and we've got to try and make use of it. The stoop is less of a problem, though. And I don't think it, that Hampton it's an issue yet. And I mm -hmm. think that big game I attended the last season where there were the 2,000, there was a, you know, a bit of congestion and a tiny bit of aggro from the Wimbledon people, but um, it's, it's, not, it's not a big issue at the moment. Uh, the club have recently announced a, uh, an academy partnership with uh, Soccer Coaching Limited. Do you feel this is a worthy cause and something that the council would look to get involved in? Yes, it, I, I would like to support it. I, in fact, I've just signed up as a patron for the club um, to, to get more involved in it and to give it support. And I think this is the way forward. It, mm. you know, by having an academy, they can train up local kids, give them an opportunity to make progress once they leave school, or probably before in some cases. Uh, and, and I think the other thing which I see happening with Harley Quinn is the rugby league team, which also has quite a small following, but it's a very good thing. You know they're developing all kind of links with the local community in terms of fitness. So you know if, if clubs are going to expand their fan base and their support, then this is the way to do it. And of course, if the academy works, they'll train up some good youngsters and they'll perform better in the league. I heard recently that the the Super League license uh, is under threat due to low crowds at uh, the Twickenham Stoop. How do you feel that the the Rugby League club can uh, can I get get more interest and get more spectators to the games? They've done very well. I mean, the, the, you know, there've been efforts over, you know, what, twenty years to get rugby league established outside of the heartland. Mm. You know, and it's 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 quite geographically concentrated. I mean, it's parts of South Lancashire, mostly South Lancashire, mm. bits of Yorkshire, um, a band across through York to Hull, but it does it never got up to the northeast. It never got down really as far as Sheffield. They've tried to establish it in Sheffield and Mansfield. It hasn't. Succeeded, so it's quite a narrow band. And they tried to get it launched in Wales, that hasn't really succeeded either. It is just about functioning in France. We've got one team that plays in the English Premiership, um, and getting a team going in London has been a long struggle with the Broncos and indeed before that. And Harlequins uh, Rugby League is the best shot that's been made of it because it's got the same pitch as the Rugby Union. They've got fantastic stadium. They've got great support. They've got very good players. And mm. uh, you know, if it can't succeed there, it can't succeed anywhere. After two, uh, after two or three relatively successful seasons down at Hampton and Richmond Borough, uh, this season has not been too good. What do you think of the current uh, current squad down there? I, I think one, one game they were they were well up actually. Was it Maidenhead? Was a couple of the opposition players have lost home, sent home, lost home, home, yeah. uh, It was uh, a bit one-sided. Well, they seem to be reasonably clear of the relegation spot, which I guess is the, the danger to avoid. Obviously, they're not going to get to the playoffs this mm. year. But yeah, if they settle down in this league and build on it, then hopefully, you know, have another go at the playoffs next year. I would hope that they'd be in line for that.
Yeah, do you feel the council could offer more support to Hampton and Richmond uh, Football Club, uh, seeing as it's the only uh, senior football club within the borough? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know what help's been asked for. Um, if somebody communicates it, I'll talk mm. to the council and see what can be done. The council isn't in a position to hand out money, I and mean, I don't think that's not um, practical, but there may be connections with local schools and colleges they can develop. Maybe more help with parking issues, I don't know. But you know, if some there is a councillor who I think is uh, chairman of the board, or certainly on the board, and acts as a link with the borough, and I hope he can sort those problems out. Okay. But um, you know, the, 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 I know there have been sort of money issues. I mean, one of the people I met recently to help sort out some of the financial problems with, with Mr. Derivas, who's the head of the uh, EDF, the energy company, because there were some quite big bills. We discovered that the electricity company had made some quite big mistakes. So there are things like that that I can mm. try to sort out. Okay, that's good. Thank you. How important is it to uh, have? A, uh, an event, a sporting event, where families can go and watch it together? Well, I think it, it's very important now. I mean, in the, the days when I used to go to soccer rugby league matches, it was all men, basically, mm. and a handful of women used to go, and they were pretty tough characters. It was definitely not for families. Um, and now the environment's changed. I mean, and a lot of dads, you know, have, have expected their partners to look after the kids on a Saturday afternoon and take them along. and turn it into a family event so mm. unless um, football and rugby clubs can cater to the family you know they're going to lose support and it will you know the, the supporters will gradually die out so they've got to open up to families so it's got to be pleasant and it's got to be safe. Do you feel that uh, families are being uh, being priced out of going to watch uh, big sporting events uh, in this in the current climate? Well, football is expensive these days. I mean, it's not it's not, not a big deal at Hampton, mm. but you know, it's virtually impossible for a you know, working class family to go to Stamford Bridge or you know big big clubs. Um, so yeah, it's got to be affordable, but at the same time, um, you know, the clubs have got to survive and they've got to pay their bills. And I, I know the footballers at Hampton are not playing particularly well. They're part time, as they? they're they're getting quite modest pay. So it's not that, you know, that the club's been extravagant. So they've got to cover their costs. Um, mm. So it's it's quite a difficult this year, and you know, I guess that's that's where the directors come in, you know, trying to get a sensible balance between charging and you know, costs. Do you feel local authorities and, and councils could be more proactive towards grassroots sports uh, and and clubs? Uh, an example is uh, Dartford Football Club have had a, a brand new stadium built by the council and. Uh, and are paying a peppercorn rent uh, to continue using it? Well, uh, in principle, if the council had lots of money then, or land, then that would be desirable. I, mm -hmm. I don't think our borough are likely to be in, in that position. And the, there is a danger when councils get too far sucked into local football clubs. I know I know the MP for Portsmouth South very well. Mike Hancock is a very good friend of mine, and he's very closely involved with Portsmouth, which, mm. of course, as you know, is going down the path. And uh, Portsmouth Council have got all kind of involvement with the club, and so they're going to lose a lot of money. So I think you know, councils, you know, their first responsibility is to look after their council taxpayers and uh, local residents. So that they have to be careful about getting too financially involved. But there are some very good examples of clubs coming up with you know very strong community support. Wimbledon is a good example after the uh, Dons went to Milton Keynes. I guess Ebbs Fleet's another one where you've got quite a serious team now formed on the back of kind of local community using all kind of innovative things like you know websites and um, you know, new technology to attract supporters.